So I figure we go around. Um, we did this last time. Everybody kind of says who they are and just where they are. And talk about the last Ronnie shoe that you wore or your favorite Ronnie shoe or how you got involved with Ronnie. And then we could just jump into some, you know, basic conversation. I sent around the one sheet, but obviously, you know, we're all pretty versed, so we can we can have a we can have a real legit conversation. I see Mike already has some <laughs> has some background that I'm sure you got some stuff to say. I'm gonna keep leaving my mic on mute, so I'll leave it alone. But yeah, <laughs> see you later, uh, Paulo. You want to jump off? Uh, no, I'd rather when you guys go first. To be honest. I'm just letting this this dog is kind of chewing on my on my foot right now, and I don't um, want to like scream. So, gotcha. I'll let somebody let him get it relaxed. Um, well, I can I can kind of do a brief intro. Obviously, I'm David. Uh, I've been here before. I am in Meriden, Connecticut, right now. Um, I think the first Ronnie shoe that I had was the the Cove Gel Light Five. And um, it's still probably one of my top Ronnie shoes of all time. Um, it, it's harder to get things from Ronnie in my size because I'm a size 13. So sort of entry level NBA size pretty much, uh, you know, but that was that was the first shoe that I ever had from him that that really that really cemented me following him on a on a regular basis. So I'm Rico Machado Torres. I'm in Mesa, Arizona. The first Ronnie shoe I had was the Gel Light 3 Nick. Kind of a boring, stupid, not really important story is that I was working at fucking Walmart at the time and I just had like a shit little apartment because they just moved here. And uh, I was late to work because I was not going to miss this drop for those Knicks. I mean, I'm a huge Mets fan. I'm a big Knicks fan. So... I had to have those. That's the one shoe that'll like never leave my collection, no matter how dire my life gets. Um, so yeah. And I've had, you know, I've purchased a couple more Ronnies along the way. I have maybe 11 or 12 pairs. Hey, I'm Paulo. Um, I am also in Connecticut. I'm a neighbor of Dave's actually. It's the next town over in Wallingford, uh, relocated from Boston a little over a year ago. Um, it's been kind of terrible um living down here um have a few ronnie shoes don't have like the you know great pairs i have the diablos um i have the adidas response trails which were my walking shoes for donato when he was alive in the winter which was great so now they're becoming the walking shoe for this dog in the winter when it snows um I'm trying to think i have a few others um but I, you know, a lot of the stuff that I have gotten from him, um, you know, Mike's helped a lot with the clothing stuff that I've gotten from him. He sent from Jersey a while back when they did a, that whole Adidas kit, which was really dope. Um, yeah, I like Ronnie. I don't hate him. Um, I wish I could. I wish I was able to acquire more stuff from him earlier on. Or, I mean, now I'm not really as interested. Maybe we'll talk about that later. But um you know, it's hard to get stuff, um, you know, coming from Boston, obviously a concept that when you know people, you can get some certain things done, but you know, it's not like I knew Ronnie or was friends with Ronnie. So, you know, uh, but yeah. Of course, the second I like was up, I had to go close the door, but uh, Mike uh, just located to Long Island from Queens. Uh, I guess we'll do the first Ronnie thing. Uh, Flamingos were the first Ronnie shoe that I was able to get. Uh, I've been in a weird relationship with the high school with him, not on a friendly manner. He was a year old, so I was always aware of him, didn't know what he did. Uh, caught up with him at a sneaker show, and then I was like, wait, you do shoes? That's crazy. So then Flamingos was around that time, so I was able to not get them from the release, but as for resale, because you couldn't get in the store. Uh, I buy a lot of Kith, not as much lately, only because things have kind of shifted as my purchase. Things I like to purchase have shifted a little bit, but the last thing I picked up from him were the three New Balance. So now that we kind of have a background from everyone on their Ronnie experience, mm -hmm. I just kind of want to talk, you know, very openly about about Ronnie. I think over the past 
10 years, if you bought a gel light three and it wasn't to run in or it wasn't something that someone gave to you, you know who Ronnie is. I feel like that is, is, is a, I don't think it's a bold statement to say. I think it's, I think it's an actual statement to say that, that Ronnie's legacy probably for us hinges on his connection to ASICs. Beyond that, though, it seems like he's transitioned away from, from ASICs since, since he's, you know, sort of launched his own brand. And how do we feel about that? How does, you know, how do you think, how do you think his legacy has stacked up for, for us now that it seems like he's, he's so much bigger than, than ASIC? I mean, nobody else seemed to jump in on that one. So I, I think it was an, <laughs> an inevitability that he was going to shift away from ASICs. I don't like that he's done it in such, uh, such a large way where, you know, you're not seeing maybe once or twice a year in ASIC, whereas when you first were introduced to Ronnie and Kith, it was because of ASIC. So I feel like there should always be uh, some kind of ASIC release or so, something based in Kith that is ASICs always. That should never be like a thing that you divert from. But I think as of late, he's really shifted his focus into more of a Kith branding as opposed to a Ronnie branding, which I think was actually one of your questions as the differential between Ronnie Feig and Kith. Um, I think early on because of the transition from David Z to Kith being his location, ASICs was that foothold that got him notarized as a sneaker designer through Kith, as opposed to being the guy who made shoes at David Z. So, I, I mean, I, I understand the growth of the brand, but I also miss ASICs. Yeah. Do you feel like he's lost? Do you feel like there's, like I've listened, I've watched a bunch of his videos and listened to him talk about his, his sort of evolution. Do you feel like there's two Ronnies, because I always feel like there's two Ronnies. I feel like there's this Ronnie that has this connection to guys like us that creating ASICs, that creating cool stuff that, that people aren't thinking about, brands that people aren't thinking about that are accessible. But then there's this Ronnie that's chasing the hype, um, this Kith, this Kith monolith of, you know, trying to trying to build trying to build this brand that rivals Supreme and rivals, you know, all these other like high end or, you know, very, very sought after brands that are sort of unaccessible. So, I mean, so a few things here, you know, bringing up what Mike was talking about ASICs, for example, um, I think some of us, not, well, not us, I don't think, but I think people in the, uh, the community, I'm going to call it um, sometimes forget that, uh, you know, the ASICs Gel i 3 was well, uh, was not designed by Ronnie, I should say. It's a shoe that was, you know, been around for a while. Um, it's a shoe that I ran in high school and that I wore in the hallway sometimes. Um, so was I doing something that we didn't force, probably, I don't know, or, you know, other track athletes were wearing those shoes too back then. Um, but I will say, you know, when he came out with, you know, the different color palettes and the different things he's done with this shoe. Yeah, that's, you know, all credit to him. But I think sometimes people forget he didn't design the shoe. He's not, they're not a designer. They're basically, um, I don't even like using that word anymore. I, I'd rather use the word enhancer. Um, because I don't think, you know, I think sometimes we give too much credit uh, to people. I mean, think about it. There are a lot of people who were in ASICs before Ronnie messed with it. Um but now going back to the other topic of what he's doing, I understand what he's doing. It's smart business. Um, you know, what is this? We don't know what his end goal is. You know, he's not here to talk to us about it. I, I think I've heard him say before that his end goal was to kind of, you know, when he has kids, basically hand it down to the kids and do that type of thing. But, you know, if somebody comes and knock on his door to acquire him, will he say no? You know, it's kind of like, you know, concepts went through that a few years ago you know, Zappos or, you know, Amazon knocked on their door and said, Hey, you know, you know, they, they, they acquired them. It was not, it hasn't been stated as an acquisition, but it was an acquisition. Um, you know, they're using money to kind of enhance. So, I mean, is Ronnie going to go that way? Maybe um, to Ronnie's credit, he's probably the only one that's actually taken the step from strictly footwear 
to try to make uh, a name brand using, you know, other manufacturers, Adidas, Nike for clothing, things of that nature. So I think that's, that's a pretty uh, important step he's taken. Uh, absolutely. So one of the things that he has said is that the focus of the things that he's created or the things that he wants to create is to create something that's special. And I know that when I first started collecting on a serious, like high level, and when I was first introduced to Ronnie, everything that he dropped felt special. Everything he put out kind of felt like, man, I gotta have that, man, that's amazing. And now I don't know if I feel that way. Is, is everything that he puts out still at that level of, that high level of feeling special? Does it still give you that? that good feeling outside of ASICs and New Balance? Because I feel like those two things are always gonna, are always gonna draw me in. Like I'm personally always like, oh, Ronnie put out an ASICs? Yeah, I, I like 80% of the time that's, that's for me. Um, he put out a New Balance? Yeah, not 80% of the time that's for me. Everything else, for me, it kind of feels like it's declined. How, do, how does everybody else feel? Like Rico? I think it goes, I think it goes along the lines of, you know, I think there's, there's just more of it. You know, he's got the Monday programs and he does, you know, Kiff classics drops, like where he just has his like standard undershirts and whatnot. Um, But I think, I think not to take like kind of a cheap uh, corny phrase or whatever, but I think there's really something for everybody. Um, And you know, like he had the, with the Tom and Jerry stuff, you know, that I'm wearing right now, since we're talking about him, and that was something that was special to me, like as a nineties kid or like an early two thousands kid, what have you, where, Hey, that's really special. I like that. I'm going to go after that. Whereas, you know, the previous four five, six, seven drops from that, I didn't feel like I needed to, but I'm sure that there are other people who are like hardcore Kiff collectors that felt like they did need that stuff. You know what I mean? So I think that I think that he's actually struck a really good balance of, well, here is something I think everybody can enjoy that's not just, you know, Kith people. And then here's stuff that are like for the hardcore Kith fans that if they really want to go after it, they can have that. You're definitely going to hear stuff in my background I'm putting the wall in. But I think as far as Kith goes and like even like the Monday program, there was an article a while ago that he had he had written or whatever, it was an article that he was being questioned and he was like, I don't know where this is going to be in five years, where it's going to be in 10 years. I, you might see bespoke suits from Kit. You don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, as a person, you grow too. You, you might like doing certain sports at a certain age and then you grow out of that sport. You want to do a different sport. It's the same thing I think in fashion. It's kind of like a revolving door where you get tired of making maybe classics. Like you have to give it to the people as an option, but you want to do something more of a sport. You want to do Nike, you want to do Adidas, you want to do uh, obscure brands, but like you have to introduce it to your client. And I think that is the evolution of where he's going, which is why I don't get so mad about it. But I also I, I question a lot of the collaborations too, if that makes any sense. I question where he's coming from. Well, I think I think you know I think part of that is part of the old uh, the manufacturers really like, and I hate to use the word using using a person like Ronnie Kith or like a, a concepts, we're going to use you guys to introduce this model and see how it does. So think of, I mean, think about certain models that they've done that with. And then what happens after that? Do people really buy that model consistently? I would say probably not because they only buy them because there were names attached to them. So, I mean, you no, know, kind of like the, you know, he came out with the, the Kith Miss New Balances, which were really nice. Um, you know, I didn't get any. Um, I refused to wear a shoe that says Fig on the back of it. Um, I just d- didn't like that. I just didn't like that. Um, I'm kind of a stickler for that kind of stuff. I would have preferred it said Kith on the back versus Fig. I'm not wearing another man's name on my feet. Um, you know, just saying. But you'll wear another man's name on your back. Got it. All right. What? That's different. That's a jersey. <laughs> so, okay. So, like, one of the one of the criticisms that I always hear is that, oh, Ronnie's Ronnie's style or his design work or you know his his coloring 
on shoes isn't as good as it used to be, or he doesn't put as much work into each shoe that he used to put into. So like, you know, oh, it was a salmon toe, salmon toe 1.0 or salmon toe 2.0, you know, that was a great shoe. It was an amazing shoe. And then, you know, he drops shoes like the Kith Montclair, you know, gel I three. And there are a lot of criticisms for that. People hated that, hated that, that three pack of shoes. I loved it. I personally thought it was amazing. Is there, is it, is it him sort of losing something or is it more of people not accepting that he's not going to just recreate the same thing every five years or every two years and re-release it in some, in some manner? Yeah, I think a lot to Mike's point where people just, people just evolve and people grow. So I, I mean, I don't, I didn't expect Ronnie Fag to just keep, pumping out gel light threes in the way that he has. I mean, I think he's kind of gotten to more of, and I don't even think if I'm using this word, right. Correct me if I'm wrong. So like an avant guard type style where like something like the palette, it's like, Oh, well here's 30 solid color shoes. And, you know, rather than, you know, putting forth the effort on, some of the color blocking he kind of just lets the collection speak for itself and a lot of the marketing that that pack got caught up in was really excellent you know logging into the website seeing all the 30 colors and like having all of that kind of creating the full experience rather than oh here's one really well color blocked shoe um i think is is more along the line that he wants to go to kind of creating that full experience but then he'll drop like a color of 1700 and it's outstanding and the color blocking is great. And so it's like Ronnie can still keep pumping out gel light threes of well color block shoes if he wants to. I just think like Mike said, he's just going in a different direction. He's just trying to do different things. It could be just, uh, you know, again, he's trying to stay ahead of the curve, obviously too. I mean, something that's, you know, worn in the 1970s, maybe it's coming back, you know, or, you know, the 80s and that kind of, that storytelling stuff. So we have to remember that, you know, certain things, I mean, you don't see anybody really running around in, you know, uh, for those that are old enough, BUM equipment, t-shirts and, you know, sweatshirts like that, you know, I, I mean, will that come back? Maybe it does, you know, we don't know, but I think Ronnie's really just trying to stay ahead of the curve and he's smart for doing that. Um, you know, we like colors, obviously. Um, I like colors, too. But we're also getting older. Do we really wear colors like that anymore? I don't know. I mean, I feel like, Rico, what you had said before, with him offering something for everybody, we we sort of got that over the past year, right? So, like, earlier on, he did a recreation of the 252. And he gave us multicolor on a gel light three. And he did you know, three different shoes. And that was for people that were looking for that. And then he dropped the palette and palette was, you know, sort of colors for a more adult audience, I guess you could say, or people that were into the solid color blocking. I personally liked the solid color blocking more than I liked the, the individual, you know, colors that he did when recreating the 252 and doing the Tokyo um, shoes is he is he trying to do is it too much or is it is it is it is it enough or is he or should he so do something I'm, completely different so i think i think that like we're forgetting that in the growth of ronnie feig and kith there comes a certain expectation as the person who's dominant in streetwear as of right now i don't think there's any other person in street where that's as prevalent as Ronnie and Kith when it comes to collaborations or collections. So you, you, you own your target audience from just, you know, people like myself and you guys who like certain things from the brand to people who've never seen the brand before that have to kind of be integrated into what it is. So it's hard for them to understand a 252, but it's easy for them to understand 30 colors of a palette. So like, it, it's one of those things where like, I, I, I'm never going to be like, Oh, for Ronnie for doing that. Like, I understand it, which a lot of people don't. 
And then there's people like in this conversation with that we're having right now, like, yes, we can understand that Ronnie is this type of person and we've expected this kind of growth, but we still want the traditional things like you just spoke about with the 252. I would have preferred the original release. That's me. And that's a couple of other people that were like, why didn't you just re-release what 252 was? Because if you have the original, they're dead anyway. So like you could do that. But, you know, it, I, I think it's one of those things that like people always forget that as a creative a store or a brand with time comes growth and not everybody's going to be able to grow with you if that helps. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think sometimes we forget too, and obviously we got to credit Ronnie, but he's probably the one boutique and I hate that word, but over the last what, 10, 12 years, that's probably grown the most. If you consider like, what he's done you know he's created his own brand his own clothing basically line i mean kith is a clothing line to me now at this point you know they have the monday program they have all that stuff i mean no one else has been able to even well i'm going to talk about concepts but concepts hasn't been able to really crack that market i mean they come out with stuff once in a while but they haven't been able to do what he does um and i think it's because ronnie kind of saw that early on you know, and I think some other boutiques, concepts, one of them and some other ones didn't really focus possibly enough on that side of the business. Um, and that's a growth strategy thing, obviously, because there are more margins on that side of the business, too. So Ronnie's not an idiot. He's smart. He saw what was there, the opportunity to take it. And so he's done it. And, you know, and now I think, you know, in some cases, I kind of look at it now and say, our, our Kith collaborations and Ronnie Fi collaborations on the sneaker side, are they second fiddle now to kind of is the clothing stuff that he puts up? I think at this point they kind of are. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and does that, does that detract from, from the brand for you, for you? Like, as I don't, like, I'm not, I'm not a big, I'm not a big apparel person. Like I'm not hunting down apparel like that, but. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I don't hunt it down either. Um, I'm more of a, if I see something, I like it and I buy it, you know. Um, you know, to say that I'm going to hunt down Kith, you know, hoodies and Kith, long sleeves. or, or you know, There's certain pieces I love, obviously. But, you know, I'm not, I'm like you, Dave, I'm not big on that kind of stuff. Um, so, I mean, it, I don't think it takes anything away from him. I think it's, I think it gives him more credit and more kind of, um I guess, you know, congratulatory kind of look at things because he's been able to do that. Whereas some other brands, like I mentioned before, uh, or I should say not brands, but boutique brands haven't been able to crack that door. Uh, Ronnie's been able to do it. I mean, he's probably following right behind. If you think about it, you know, Supreme does it all the time, you know, um, he's, he's right there with them. The Noah's of the world and the, um, and Leon Dior, same type of thing, but they kind of worked reverse. They started on the clothing side and now they're starting to use sneakers to help promote their brand a little more. So I think, you know, they all have their own way, but I think Ronnie, you got to give him credit for doing what he did with the, with the clothing side of things. He's been able to really, you know, take that market a little bit. And so one of the questions that I asked or that I wrote down was, how do we feel about his legacy? So what is his legacy like where does he stand like in in terms of you know street wear, streetwear brands or boutiques or you know just brands in general that that exist right now um mikey you kind of hinted that he might be at the top i mean who else is there if you think about it like who else is really as far as as far as i'm concerned you have other brands that make clothes sure you have other brands brands that do collaboration sure but do you have brands that do both to such a high regard? And like people are, people are trying to get collaborated with him. BMW, I mean, you saw Hikmet do that, whatever he did with Porsche. But I mean, if you're looking at like levels, I, I, I don't even think you could even touch the BMW level. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's, it's one of those things where like the production's up, the, the collaborations are up, where you had a full capsule. Like what the, the Where'd you see that come from? And then you had Nike follow up right after that for the Knicks. Like, I'm not a Knicks fan, but at the end of the day, like, you you can't deny how fire it is, though. Like, so like, even he makes you like things that you don't even like, which I think is an attribute. I mean, yeah, just along the lines of what Mike said. I mean, it, there's it's really hard. I mean, you know, we have 
this WhatsApp group, like for people who love runners that, I mean, I know I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be in a group like that if it weren't for Ronnie Fyag. I wouldn't have, you know, most of these New Balance Asics if it weren't for Ronnie. I mean, he really, to me, and I think to a lot of people is, I mean, kind of how Jordan is to sneakers, like how Jordan's like everyone's introduction to, oh, sneakers are dope, like Jordan 1s, Jordan 3s, blah, 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 blah. I, I feel like Ronnie is that level for runners and for wearing them in, in a casual, in a casual way rather than just to run or just because, you know, you're on a track team or whatever. So, and so just him growing and him growing the brand and it becoming what it is, you know, his collaborations. I mean, he brought Dipset to do a, to do, you know, like no one else is really doing that or thinking that way. And so as far as that, I mean, Ronnie's pretty, I mean, his legacy cemented. He's just one of, you know, the greatest, he's pushed sneakers, especially running sneakers as far forward as I think Jordan has to basketball as far as sneakers go. I'm going to double Dutch one more time. So in regard to, we were talking before and I kind of like missed out on the conversation a little bit about designing and where his design is gone. I think people also forget that as big as kids, he's not the only design. He's getting designs brought to him and he's just okaying it. So with that many projects and that amount of time, like you have to understand, like, yes, he posts pictures of him looking at the looks, but like realistically, they're, they're bringing him the looks. It's like, all right, well, we're doing BMW. Show me what you got. I think earlier on David Z and beginning of Kith, it was a lot of him going, I like this material, not this. I want this color, not this. I want that, I want this. I think there's a lot less of that now. So like, you have to understand that too, which I think people miss as well. No, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, think, I think there is um, an underestimation of where he is in the space now. So he, like you said, he is getting things brought to him and he in some of his interviews he said I'm saying no to more things now than I than I used to so I think that's that's a reality that we that we sort of take for granted um what is his legacy maybe to us or maybe just in general without ASICs or New Balance do you think he gets where he gets without those those two things those two brands uh, I think that he still gets there at, okay, let, let me take that back. So at the beginning of Kith and Ronnie transitioning from David Z, there was a lot more street cred and hype based around his earlier on stuff. The resale was through the roof. It was harder to get, just like with anything. When it's harder to get, people want to buy it more. I think if he doesn't have that foothold on the community or culture, I should say more than community, the culture at that time, he doesn't get a pop-up with Nike in Atrium to then test out Kith Treats, which also blows up, which we didn't even touch on. Like you, you get Nike to do a full install, only Nike products. You get special releases on special products. You get a test run of Kith Treats while you're running like a sample little store across the street. I think without ASICs, there is no meteoric growth to Kith, because I, I feel like their their year five was, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a little bit more on the inside. I know that they were in the black by their second year, financially. So that's unheard of. But not not just green, but black. Like you're, you're they were making hand over fist by their second year. So it, it, it's definitely attributed to ASICs. And without it, I don't think he gets there that fast, personally. I think he gets there eventually as it is. Um, but I think the ASICs really helped him a lot, tremendously. Um, you know, if you think about it, he kind of opened the door for like a lot of these other boutiques that did collabs on ASICs projects. So, you know, was it, you know, I would even say he's probably responsible for that. Um, you know, the con concepts of the world, the, the pathos of the world, the, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, they, they weren't, they weren't touching ASICs, um, did it, and, you know, they followed suit. So, you know, he was kind of leading the, again, you know, going back to the kind of, you know, doing something forward thinking, and I think that's what he was doing. 
Um, so, you know, all kudos to him for that. Look at Puma. Puma too. He did COA and like Puma took off after that. Like it wasn't, it wasn't just ASICs. It was like whatever he was touching. And then he, he dabbled in Adidas with that, the 9-11 tribute, which was a super flop. That was yeah. his first Adidas. And that wasn't like, oh, he did the best. Like it wasn't like he was Superman at that moment, but like you understood that runners were his niche. Yeah. It wasn't a bigger brand yet. He wasn't even able to touch a bigger brand because when he did, and it was, it was connected to 9-11. It wasn't even like he did it to just be like, I'm putting out an Adidas. It was like, we're doing this in conjunction with 9-11, articles, news, coverage. And it was like, it wasn't it wasn't as spectacular as an ASIC drop. Like even when they re-released the Gel Light 3 of the Volcano, like I did releases, you guys know that. So I did releases for them for the longest time. There were lines for stuff, but the Volcano 2.0 on the Gel Light 3 was possibly the worst release handled at Keith in, Keith, handled at Keith in my tenure of being there. Like, and it was a gel like three years after gel, after like he was already done doing the hype stuff. So it's a testament to what really gave him a rise, I think. The, uh, yeah, a, a six. He's not there. He's not there without a six. And now it that really just kind of opened the door. You know, you see that meme all the time going around. That's like, oh, you know, the the Kiss Pringles. It's 2050, and the Kiss Pringles collection is over. That's it. He did it. He collaborated with every brand on the planet, <laughs> and you know he's 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 on his way there because he he can't miss. You know he's just. I think he's you know back to what Mike said about the Kiss treats and stuff like that. He's in tune with so much with you know with not even just streetwear and sneakers, but like with cereal and with um and with ice cream and like he he kind of has all of these things that you know in bmw even like it's it's just it's gonna be it's gonna be kith is gonna be in everything and you know i i for one if he collabs with every brand in the world like i'm fine with it like i just need kith three musketeers like i'm good you know